This week, there was a new drive, a new push in the negotiations for the Trans-Pacific Partnership deal. Japan wants a deal, and its Prime Minister is prepared to do anything he has to to push it through. So will that help politicians to reach agreement after years of negotiations? And what does it mean for New Zealand? We'll talk to Trade Minister Tim Grosser in just a moment, but first I'm joined by Sir Graham Harrison, the founder of what is now Ansco Foods, our biggest meat exporter to Japan. Good morning to you, Sir Graham. Good morning, Thank you for joining Michael. us this morning. So, if we have a TPP and Japan is involved, to what degree do you think we will benefit? We will uh, benefit far more than with Japan not in TPP. The numbers have been uh, crunched by independent institutes in the United States, and they talk about a $3.5 billion uh, per year gain in our exports uh, without Japan, and with Japan in, over $5 billion. So this is huge. Uh, in GDP terms, probably a 2% gain uh, for New Zealand uh, can be expected, depending on the level of comprehensiveness. And uh, clearly, uh, uh, the New Zealand's stance is that the uh, outcome must be comprehensive. Can you give us an idea uh, in your dealings with Japan on the level of tariffs that have been imposed there? The le highest levels of tariff on New Zealand products apply to dairy. Uh, for example, milk powders are over 300 per cent. Uh, and in terms of some of our larger other export items, uh, we look at uh, uh, beef and it's 38.5 per cent. That's a huge impost. And clearly, when we look at a competition between beef and other meats, it is by far the most protected. In addition to the tariffs, there is also the level of support, direct support to Japanese farmers, because Japan has to import the bulk of its feed uh, to supply its livestock industry. And there are direct aids there as well. We estimate that those aids are worth well in excess of one billion US dollars. So huge uh, benefits given to Japanese farmers to protect their position. Indeed, such a protected economy. So why is Japan now so keen to get involved? Why are they keen to see this deal go through? Well, sadly, Japan's been going sideways for the last 20 years. It's hard to appreciate in New Zealand what it's like to live in a country that's prospered so well for a period and then gone through a deflationary phase. That deflationary phase has is, is now been going on for such a long time. So uh, Japan has also been losing out in terms of what has been occurring with its neighbours. For example, Korea has a comprehensive FTA with the United States. It's in negotiations with the European Union. And clearly, it's seen on its doorsteps the huge growth of China. So Japan has to do something to remain competitive. Its agricultural sector has remained the same effectively since the mid-1950s. And we see in Japan actual land use uh, declining. Uh, because farmers are getting older. The average age of farmer in Japan is 68, and you're just not bringing young people in. So it's time for reform, and Japan knows that it has to deal with this and will use TPP as a pretext to undertake very serious structural reforms. Critics of the TPP, and there, there are a lot, they say that this is about America and Japan, that these are two countries who really stand to benefit the most out of this deal. What do you say to that? Well, there's no question that Japan's inclusion in the TPP negotiations, and remember, they are the last player to come on board, the 12th player, uh, have lifted the game and actually made the stakes well worthwhile for the United States. Always when it comes to any sort of plurilateral or multilateral trade arrangements, agriculture is a problem. And the United States, believe it or not, even though it's really one of the world's great exporting nations in terms of agricultural products, has this uh, legacy of a farm trade protectionism. Uh, the point is that for the United States, uh, access into Japan is a big gain. And all of a sudden, in Washington, we have the farm lobby right behind a TPP. Uh, and this makes it 
just so much better for New Zealand because we ourselves have, of course, been trying to get a free trade agreement with the United States for a long time. So all of this comes together with two countries, the world's first and third largest economy, uh, both uh, believing in a rules-based trading system that are on our side. And we uh, can have quite an influence in that process. And make no mistake about it, much of the intellectual grunt in this process, New Zealand has been responsible for, and we have, we have a trade minister that is hugely highly thought of in both the United States and in Japan. We should not underestimate our influence. Yes, he's sitting next to me at the moment. We'll speak to him in, in just a tick. But uh, that said, there is uh, a lot of concern, really, about the deal, too. There have been a lot of critics of the TPP and whether or not uh, it should go ahead. Is there anything that you think New Zealand should insist upon before signing up to the TPP? Well, any uh, plurilateral or multilateral, even bilateral trade deal has to go through a process of endorsement by the legislator in this country. So there is a, there, there, that is always there. It never has not been in place. Uh, New Zealand does have some issues, uh, and they relate around uh, IP, intellectual property. Uh, they relate around Pharmac. These are all well known. But I would say to you on the other side that the gains for New Zealand that are come, going to come for the primary sectors are so huge that these will be weighed up very carefully by the New Zealand public and they will be given every chance to do so, I am sure, uh, by the government. Right, Sir Graham Harrison from ANSCO. Appreciate your time for us this morning. Thank you.